Snow White from A Wee Book of Fairy Tales in Scots, written by Matthew Fitt and James Robertson and illustrated by Deborah Campbell, published by Ichiku Books. Lang, lang ago, in the days of Lang Syne, there was a beautiful queen, and this queen had an old magic keekin glass. All day and every day the queen stared at herself in this glass, sparing the same question o'er and o'er again. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the boriest o' them o'? And the mirror tell her, Oh, queen, I canna tell a lee. The bonniest of them o' is ye. And it was the same the next day. Mirror, mirror, you're my pal. Tell me who's the bonniest gal. Queen, what I had to say is true. The bonniest lass o' all is you. And the day after that. Mirror, go to tell us once again. Queen, you're a stoter, ten out of ten. All day and every day the queen spared what was the most beautiful and the keeking glass I answered that it was her. But one morning, the queen got out of bed and spared the mirror her favourite question. Mirror, mirror, what do you say? Was the bonniest last the day? But this morning, the keeking glass held its wish. Come on, walk up, rise and shine, tell me I'm the bonny queen. But still the mirror didn't say a word. Come on, what's going on? This is not fair. Am I no the bonniest on the mare? The queen's face turned all peely wally. She was fear what the, the mirror would say. I was the bonniest, shouted the queen. You tell me last night. But the bonniest this morning, replied the glass, is young Snow White. The queen shuggled with anger. Snow White was her stepdaughter. And although she loved the glass, she loved herself even more. Snow White is a traitor. Snow White is nae good. Guards, tacker and lever and Baberty Wood. Baberty Wood was a muckle dark place for crabbit wolves and bears. The palace guards took young Snow White into the middle of the wood and left her alone. Snow White was awfully, awfully fiat. She didn't ken what she had done to make the Queen so angry. Greeting, she ran through the forest, no thinking where she was going. She hurt her feet in sharp stains, and the branches of trees skelped her arms and legs. Snow White was just about to gee up and lie down to wait for the crows to come and pick out her eyes when she saw a wee hoose. Snow White chapped in the door. There was no answer, so she went then. Inside the hoose, she saw a table set out with seven wee plates full of tatties and breed and seven wee cups full of juice. Snow White was that hungry, she ate up all the tatties and scoffed all the bread and guzzled down all the juice. Aside the table, there were seven wee beds with seven wee pillies. Snow White was that wabbit, she lay down in the first bed, but it was too wee for her. She tried the second one, but that was too wee for her and all. She tried all the beds until she came to the seventh one. That bed was fine. So she lay down in it and fell over into a deep sleep. That evening, when it was dark, the owners of the house returned. They were seven dwarves that had been hawking gold at a nearby mountain all day and they were sore tired and gay hungry. But when they lit condos to see better, they kent immediately that something was wrong. Hey, what Egypt's been at my tea? speared the dwarf called Greedy. Telling you now it was nae me, replied the dwarf called Luggy. Somebody else has been in our house, cried Nebby. And that somebody has stolen my juice, howled Crabbit. And all the tatties and the breed, yelled Gleekit. That somebody will soon be deed, roared Minger. Then Big Heed, what was the oldest and wisest of the seven dwarves, says, Dinna panic, lads, dinna fear. See, our wee guest is sleeping here. And the dwarves looked and they saw Snow White asleep in one of the beds. Get out my bed, said Greedy. Thon's no fair. Hod your wished, said the other dwarves. You sleep in the flare. She's such a sad body wee crater, said Big Heed. She'll bide with us until she feels better. And the dwarves let Snow White bide with them in their house. 
Back at the palace, the Queen, thinking that Snow White must have been eaten by one of the crabbit bears by now, couldn't wait to spear the magic mirror or question. Oh, my bra wee looking glass, tell me was the bonniest lass. Roses are red, violets are blue, said the mirror. Tell you what, hen, it is na you. Mirror, mirror, you feel no right. I, the mirror said, and the bonniest lass is still Snow White. But Snow White's dead. She's lying in the glen. No, she's fast asleep at the dwarf's button bend. Hearing that, the queen's face turned blue, then pink, then purple with rage. As angry as a bike of bees, she got hold of a big shiny red apple and duked it in a bucket full of poison. Then she dressed herself up as an old wife and gaed through the Baberty wood to the dwarf's house. It was dreech weather that day, but the Queen waited there in the pouring rain until Big Heat, Greedy, Luggy, Nebby, Crabbit, Gleekit and Minger had left the house to go to work. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Hi he, hi he, there's loads of work the day. Hey ho, hey ho, we're gone to shoot the craw. The seven dwarves sang as they disappeared o'er the brae. When they were awoke, the Queen chapped in the door. It was opened by the beautiful young Snow White. The Queen was even more furious when she saw who Bonnie the Lass had become, but she kept her anger to herself and smiled. Good morning, my dear. Where's all your busy wee pals? Och, said Snow White, they're digging up mines and howking canals. Would you mind, said the Queen, if I came in out the rain? No, Granny, replied Snow White. Come in and dry out. I'm here all in. On your own? What a shame. Come on, this'll make you feel bra. Just tack this red apple and gi a chaw. And she offered Snow White the big shiny red apple that she had duked in the bucket of poison. The last took yin bite out of it and immediately dropped down onto the flare. The sleek it queen went back to her palace, grinning from lug to lug, thinking that she had killed Snow White. When the seven dwarves came home, they couldn't believe what they saw. What has happened to Snow White Fair? cried Greedy. Why is she lying down there in the flare? asked Luggy. Her inner closed, her red lips are still, said Nebby. She does not look weel, she looks awfully ill, said Crabbit. My hair is full of terrible dread, declared Gleekit. Mine too, sobbed Minger, for Snow White is dead. Then Big Heed, the oldest and wisest of the seven dwarfs, said, We must tack her out to the old birk tree and bury her there with dignity. And the dwarfs picked Snow White up and carried her through the wood. A prince from another land was riding by in a braw white cuddy. He saw the seven wee men carrying this beautiful lassie on their shudders through the forest. Stop, men, hold it there. I can't let ye pass afore ye tell me the name of this bonny young lass. And without waiting to hear her name, the prince looped down for his cuddy and kissed Snow White in the lips. The dwarves were not happy that the prince had kissed her without asking, and a rammy broke out among them. But while they were all arguing, the lassie opened her in. She hosted and coughed and then boked up the piece of the poisoned apple. When she was well again, Snow White told the prince about the sleek queen. With the seven dwarves as his soldiers, the prince battered down the palace door and smashed the magic mirror into a thousand wee bitties. Snow White and the prince were married in the dwarves' mind. That's Big Heed, Greedy, Luggy, Nebby, Crabbit, Gleekit and Minger were the best men. All seven of them on Snow White's royal wedding day.